by the time um, I became caucus chair, Victor was pretty worn out. And he needed to pass the baton. And I don't know how it happened, but I, I was interested. And I was also sort of energized and felt like I could do something. I was also um, encouraged because I felt that there was so much more we could do. And one of the things they had talked about was a newsletter. And I think what happened was that I ended up working on the newsletter before I became caucus chair. Because Alfredo Luján put the first one together and I helped get it printed and sent out. And then maybe by the second year, I became the caucus co-chair with Mari Carmen Cruz. Because what the Latino caucus has always done is they always have two, at least two co-chairs where one person attends NCTE who is a K through 12 mm. person and then the other college level person goes to four seats because it's very expensive to try to come to two conferences a year. Mm -hmm. It's also a hardship <laughs> if you're teaching, you know, you, your students get angry, your family gets angry. At least it, my students and my family <laughs> get angry. <laughs> and so it's hard to get support to get paid to go to two conferences. So we separate the duties that way. And um, Marika Cruz was my counterpart. And she teaches at Choya High School in um, um, Tucson. And uh, she was already a long time um, member and, and leader in NCTE, not just in the Latino Caucus. So in a way, I was mentored by Mari Carmen Cruz, by Victor Villanueva, and also other people within the Latino Caucus, like Bobby uh, Sidisa Houchins, who is co-chair now with uh, Renee and Christina. Um, I only met R Roseanne Gonzalez a couple of times, but she was a powerful her presence. Chris Gutierrez. Um, there was other people. Our caucus has always traditionally been pan-ethnic. We welcome anyone to come. We have always had Native American colleagues because the, the American Indian Caucus didn't get formed until not too long ago. We always had Asian members. One of the other people that helped mentor me is Gail Okawa, who's at uh, Youngstown State. I would wish that the folks of color, both the Latino Caucus and the Black Caucus, would look to the ways in which white women have managed to work their ways through the institution. Some of that is, of course, because they're white. There's no doubt about that. But some of it is a kind of political savvy that we don't know how to tap into. Um, and we have to stop the stupid ass infighting. Um, <laughs> probably need to edit that. But if, if we, this infighting about who's more oppressed than whom, um, the Oppression Olympics serves no one. It serves no one. The Black Caucus has got a kind of face that, uh, uh, that white folks will kowtow to. But where is their real political power um, within this, this organization? Um, now, I, I, think, I think it is a time, and, and I, Sandra Gibbs was always against it, but, and she was right for her time. But I think it's the time for coalitions and coalitions for action. I once wrote that, uh, that I was taught in elementary school the seven wonders of the world. That the eighth wonder was that I was a graduate student before I found out that there were actually pyramids on this hemisphere. Uh, and not only that, but they were bigger than the ones in Egypt. I mean, it's a wonder. So, <laughs> so that we are challenging that history uh, in ways that are important. We're not trying to exoticize it. We're just trying to put it alongside. I mean, if we really believe that how we conduct our business as beings on the planet is rhetorical, um, and that means that rhetorical rhetoric is universal. That means there were rhetorics to be studied that we have known nothing about because we have this imperial linear progression from one empire to the next until this one. Um, now, that stuff is all very interesting, but you're right that the real work to be done is in composition. I, that, there's no doubt about that. And, and I worry that what happens when we loosen up all of these linguistic things is that we make it possible for our kids to fail. Uh, we do code switching and code meshing, 
and all this all code stuff and all of that sounds good and the, all of the people who are making that case have the master's code now I want to hear that from somebody who can't play <laughs> and I want to see the person who can't play actually win right? uh, I, it always strikes me you know back in the 1980s there was there was uh, cultural literacy and and all the white folks went just dead on went after Edie Hirsch and I said yeah easy for you to say you've got it if I'm gonna make it I'm gonna have to learn this stuff I know where the power is <laughs> so where's the power the power is in literacy I think that's true and that means we're gonna have to find the ways to acknowledge our different power relations um, to acknowledge our different linguistic language relations and yet to recognize to me always I'm, I'm, I, I'm of a mind that still says that we have to teach standard English, but we have to teach it not as some sort of grand thing, but as the language of power. And if you can manipulate power, what else is there? The future is ours if we don't acquiesce, if we recognize always that there are political structures at play and power structures at play and that people in power do not give it up lightly even when they are just lovely people and want the best for the poor unfortunates. Uh, and, but that's always the mentality. It's never the equally, equally able and politically disenfranchised. It's never stated. I mean, there's a few exceptions. John Trimber is one of them. The future is ours, but it takes being conscious of the obstacles that are there uh, and finding ways to negotiate them. And, and part of the problem with the oppositional mentality is that that becomes a justification then to shut the door. Um, so it does take being politically smart um, and holding on to your dignity. I was at one point the only Latino rhetorician. Um, and I've had very good fortune that the book I wrote mainly to flip off this organization actually got caught up by the organization, Bootstraps. Um, that, that was supposed to be a swan song. That was, I'm getting out of here. Y'all don't know what you're doing. Um, but it turned out to be quite the opposite. Huh? Um, yes, I'm so, and, and it's a smart it's a smart generation coming up that, that, that I really like. Uh, what we have now are folks who are learning how to talk their talk, but to talk our words. Um, and that's really important, saying really smart stuff in ways that white folks can understand, but doesn't kiss up to the white folk. I love it. Yeah, I think there is a new generation coming in. That is so hot. I mean, it just really is exciting. <laughs>